subject to, uh, this evening. I want to talk about falling in love with Jesus and falling in love with him. Uh, I, I think that uh, as the evangelist was talking about, I think until you can fall in love with Jesus, you can't invite somebody else. I, I think that too many people are so wrapped up in themselves that they forget about other people. And I, I think that's the church, unfortunately, has become more of a social club instead of being a rehab center. I'll say that again. I said, I think the church has become more of a social club than a rehab center, meaning that it's a place where people's lives can change and things can be delivered and things can happen in their lives. And I think that's very important. And so when I'm talking about falling in love with Jesus, because I believe every answer to every problem has to start with the love of God. I think it has to start with love. It starts with love and then we end with love. I think everything you do has to be predicated or based upon the love of God that's in your life. And unless a person begins to fall in love with Jesus, then they won't be able to move freely like they need to be. Love is like the oil uh, that's in a car, in an engine that causes that engine to car to function. You can go a little bit without oil in the engine, but after a while, the engine's going to lock up uh, because it doesn't have the lubrication that it needs in order for the pistons inside of the engine to start uh, functioning like it needs to do. And I think without the love of God being expressed in our lives, our lives will just be mundane. It will be just insignificant, irrelevant. It won't have the magnitude of impact that it needs to do in people's lives. Because reality is this, there's somebody waiting on all of us out there. But until I get about the, the Lord's business and begin to realize there's a love that has to be expressed. Revelation is a, a very good book to me. Has a lot of uh, analogies and metaphors and parables that's in there. Talks about the end time. When we speak of the book of Revelation, most people stray away from it because they don't understand it because it talks about animals and beasts and different types of things that are going on. Some of those are definitely representations of uh, different foreign countries that's in these last days. But what I want to focus on is the one with John, uh, the Apostle John, that is, not the one who wrote the uh, Gospel of John, uh, but the other John who actually was on the island of Platmus. The Bible talks about he fell into a vision, a trance, and uh, when he did that, God began to speak to him. He began to show him some things, and so uh, you must understand that these are what we call revelation or revealed information, revelation of future things that shall come to pass. And so he talked to the churches. And these churches are symbolic, I believe, of the universal church, even though there's six, seven different parts of the churches that he was talking to. I think all of them comprises of the whole universal church. And so when the whole universal church is dealt with, I believe now we can really do what God wants us to do. Because everything must be motivated by love. If nothing is motivated by love, then it has this thing into selfishness. I found out the reason why relationships can't work in people's lives because folks are selfish. Got quiet on that one. You know, do you realize selfishness is an enemy to love? Selfishness is always concerned about you and nobody else. It doesn't care if anybody else have anything at all. Selfishness, and, and one thing about selfish, selfish people are self-centered people. They're always concerned about me, my, and no one else. They never think about anybody else, and they don't realize that whatever you sow, you reap. So if you're selfish, you're going you're gonna to sow selfishness, and so therefore you're going to reap selfishness. It's the only thing you're going to have around you are people that are selfish. Okay, all right, all right. And so one of the things that the love of God knows how to deal with the self-centered and the selfishness that are locked up, I would call, in the, the flesh of individuals. And so the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation, he talks about uh, that he was talking to the church at Lacedonia, and he said, I know that works. Uh, the word works means labors, or we can call it corresponding actions. I know your actions. I know what you're doing. He said, but you need a cold heart. He said, but you're lukewarm, and uh, we understand this, that he's referenced to hot being on fire. Uh, uh, cold means just being dead, but lukewarm is right in between. And so all of us realize this, as the Bible talks about here, that lukewarm people or people who have tasted of the fire of God, tasted of the world, but haven't decided what they really want to do yet. So they become what we call lukewarm. And... Uh, it's amazing to me when you talk about lukewarm people, you would think that lukewarm people are maybe people that are struggling, may not have it, everything. But the Bible talks about that the Luke, these people were, were rich. They were increased. So just because you got money, just because you dress nice and you look nice and you give the facade of everything that's going on, doesn't mean you're on fire for God. So we have to understand that the fire of God has nothing to do with the outward apparel that you have on, yet is the inward heart that you possess. 
Are you listening to me? And, and, and so he talked to the church at Lacedonia. He says, uh, I know your works are hot or cold. He said, but it, it, because of you lukewarm, he said, I will spew you out of his mouth. And that's, that's understandable to realize the Bible talks about that God hates lukewarmness. Uh, lukewarm people are people that really don't catch the fire. They just hear. They, they see me on Wednesdays and Sunday. They, they plan on Facebook. They're on Twitter. They're doing everything else. And, and all of a sudden, they, they, they really don't want it. They just dare. They know they need to be saved. They know they need to go to heaven. So they have life insurance, but they have no person that actually uh, helped them to get better. So let me tell you about life insurance. Life insurance is like fire insurance. It only goes into effect when you die. Okay, how many people know that? Amen, amen, amen. So you don't get life insurance while you're living. Amen. So some people treat Jesus like that. They only, they only need him when he die. When they die, then that's when they need him. Uh, but reality is this. None of you should need him when he die. When you die, but you should need him while you're living. Amen. And, and so some people just only want fire insurance. What's the fire insurance? Preacher, I don't want to go to hell. That's, that's the truth. No one wants to go to hell. No, don't want to go to hell by no means. The Bible talks about hell is darkness called the gnashing of teeth. The Bible talks about where the worm dieth not, where the worm is now eating up in your flesh. People talk about where I thought that when you get, you know, when your body goes to the dust of the ground, you, you, you lose your body. You lose your physical body. But there is a spiritual body that the Bible is talking about here that can be hurt through fire. Amen, amen, amen. So, so, so it just can't be your spirit burning. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Amen. Because the Bible said, with a worm diet, not with the maggots that's died not. So, so the Bible talks. So, so, so most folks want the fire insurance. They want to say, Jesus, uh, uh, be my savior. And uh, that's a wonderful thing because he saved all of us uh, from a life of sin. And we thank God for the saving power of you. Thank God he died on the cross. But I, I, I want to remind people, I'm going to say something that might uh, uh, up in your theology tonight. Uh, uh, why we keep looking, for the, uh, looking to Jesus on the cross when he's no longer on the cross? Because every time you look at the cross, you look at death. But if you look at heaven, you look at resurrection. So he's not on the cross no more. He's raised from the dead. The Bible says right now, where is Jesus right now? According to the scripture, he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession on your behalf. Stop looking at the cross and look to heaven. Now, if you're a sinner, you need to look to the cross. But if you're saved, look to heaven. Come on, look at your name and say, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Because most folks, you know, they're still looking to the cross. Uh, uh, and he's not on the cross no more. Matter of fact, he, he left the cross over 2,000 years ago. Matter of fact, he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession on your behalf. He's praying for you that you have an understanding of what his resurrection did. Because his resurrection resurrected you out of a lost and sinful state that you were in. And because of his resurrection power, the Bible talks about that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken or make alive your mortal body. She calls you to have life and life more abundantly living on this earth. So how many people know you need Jesus right now? Amen. Not in the by and by. I know one day we're going to get to heaven we're going to see him. Amen. But I need him right now. Amen. I need him while I'm going through the hell right now. Amen. I know I'm going to see him when I get to heaven, but I need him right now. I need some insurance going to go into effect right now. It's like having health insurance. Amen. You know, you know, you got health insurance because you need it right now. In, in the natural, come on, glory to God. You, you want to sign a policy, say, well, your health insurance ain't going to go into effect for 25 years from now. Well, I don't need that. I need something right now. Can y'all say amen? amen? Yeah, I got Jesus to go to heaven, but I need Jesus to help me know how to live right now. Amen. Is anybody? Okay, all right. And, and because of that, because I need him, then the Bible talks about here, then I have to be careful that I don't get lukewarm. Lukewarm, folks, uh, uh, people are very unique. They're very interested to me, interesting people, uh, because lukewarm people, they have tasted of the godliness of God, but not trying to figure out what they really want to do. It's, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't drink too many sodas. I don't drink any really sodas anymore. Uh, but when I did drink some sodas, uh, and I did drink Diet Coke, and of course, I know that's not good for you, you know, disclaimer, you know, just not good for you. Uh, but I couldn't drink it warm. It just didn't taste right, amen. If I did drink, I mean, it had, it had to be cold, amen, amen, amen. You know, that's why I understand how people can drink uh, cold coffee, and, you know. You know, I was about to break, man, matter of fact, in the back before I came up, I got me some hot cocoa, hot chocolate, not cold chocolate. <laughs> can y'all say amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. And how many people know that hot water has a funny way of dissolving stuff? 
Amen, amen. And, you know, you know I, one time, and this embarrassed my point, I was back there having some cocoa, and uh, where I actually took the, the, the cocoa out the package and put it in there. But, you know, but I, I thought the water was hot, and I put some cold water in there. And uh, you don't realize this, that uh, uh, cold water won't make this stuff dissolve like it needs to. It's just going to sit up there and look at you. And it kind of make you mad when you taste it. It make you want to spit it. Yeah, y'all get nigga, get it, okay? Yeah, but when I got some hot water, I just bit that baby. I said, ooh, this is good, good. Oh, that was great. Hey, man, because it's amazing to me when hot comes along, it has a way of doing things what cold cannot do. And so the Bible talks about that God goes over to say, I'd rather you either be hot or you be cold. But if you're hypocritical, I don't like you. If you're in between, I don't like you. Amen. That's why I tell folks, and I, and I think you're going to hear me say this more and more and more. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right now at this stage in my life. Either you like us or you don't. Not in between. Look at your name and say, either you like me or you don't. Pick one. No, no, no. See, see, see. Oh, yeah, listen. See, we, we're getting there. See, I, I think what's happening here at Alfred is, is so many people, don't, they, they don't know if they save or not save. They're in between. Some people try to still figure out whether or not they're a man or a woman. And you better be careful who you date because they may look like one place up here until you marry them and you, okay, let me let that alone. You undress, they look just like you. But anyway, but, but see, see. Yeah, I went there. I went there. I went there because you never know who people are. Hey, Amen. I don't like phony, hypocritical people. Either you like us or you don't. And see, that's what I like about God. You know, God said either you love me or you don't. I don't like that halfway love. Are y'all listening to me here tonight? In other words, you don't want something that's lukewarm. Come on, either you're all in or you all out. You can't have this all in, you know, I'm, I'm just halfway, I'm just, you know, it is what it is. You can't walk like that with God. You got to be all the way in with God, all the way out. He cannot be in between. Are y'all listening to me tonight? So you have to make a decision. And so that's why lukewarm folks get on God's nerves. Really, they really do. They, that's why he vomit. And I don't know about you. I never want to be a, a, a substance that goes into the mouth of God and he throws me right back out. Amen. Whatever you vomit out, you don't like. It don't taste good. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that God is good. My question is, when God tastes you, is, are you good? <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. You should taste good in the eyes of God, or do you? And so it has to do with lukewarmness. It's a notice here. So the Bible says in verse 17, because thou says, I'm rich. I'm rich. I got all these goods. I got money. I got influence. I got all of that. That doesn't mean you're on fire for God. Come on now. That, I mean, come on now. Don't, you know, I always tell folks, don't be perpetrating. You can dress nice, look nice, have everything altered and everything else. Hey, man, at the end of the day, man, are you on fire for God? Are you, are you in love with you? I'm talking about uh, loving Jesus tonight. Amen. Because I realize that is the antidote for every problem. If I'm in love with Jesus, I don't want to do anything to hurt him. If I'm in love with Jesus, he's my big papa. Okay, let me give you, let me script, let me give you some scriptures. I never seen no scripture about Jesus being my big papa. Okay, well, the Bible talks about that. My, look at some of y'all looking. Like, what are he about to quote here? Okay, the Bible says that God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Bible called God the breasted one. He provides milk to us. Well, that's what the scripture says now. He's my all in all. But I got to love him with everything on the inside of me because there's something about the love of God. Have you noticed the Bible gives us, uh, he gave us so many commandments, but he gave us really two that we really need to really follow. And if we follow these things, everything else will go right on into line. I know we had, you know, people talk about that. I live by the Ten Commandments. Well, according to the scripture, if you live by two, two commandments, the other two Ten Commandments, you, you, they'll fulfill themselves. The first one was, thou shall love thy God, come on, with all thy what? Heart, come on, all thy what? Mind and all thy what? Soul. So the first commandment is, thou shall love God with everything. And then the second commandment he had that, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. The reason why folks can't love other folks, they don't love God. Okay, let me, let me start with you. You can't truly love somebody until you love God because it takes the love of God to love folks. Yeah. 
Y'all better say amen up here. Say, I ain't talking about this little crazy fleshly hee-hee-hee <laughs> type of love. I'm talking about the love you love them even when they act crazy, even when they act. Are y'all listening to me? That's why sometimes it's hard for folks to love other folks because folks don't love God like they need to be. But if I love God, I'm going to love you. Amen. I ain't got to, okay, hold up, hold up. I ain't got to like you, but I can love you. What you mean I ain't got to like? I ain't got to like your behavior, but I have to, I love you. Do you realize that God loves us and may not like our behavior? Hold up, man. Y'all, you know that. You know that's called the agape love, the unconditional love. Man, come on. Don't you love your kids even though they act crazy sometimes? Come on. Can y'all say amen, parents? Amen. Raise your hand. Your kids do act crazy. Mine do, but they growing up. They getting out of that. Yeah. Think some of the parents, mm-hmm, what your kids do? Amen. The Bible said foolishness. That's what the Word said now. It's bound up in every child. I said every child. That's my baby. Well, he got some foolishness in him. And how did you get it out? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, I don't spank my child. That's why he giving some woman hell. That's why he giving some man hell. Because the Bible says on the rod. The rod going to get him out. Rod. I'm going to pray it out. You pray. I got the rod. I'm, trying to pray. I'm praying for him. He over there spitting and turning around. and ah, I'm praying. You pray. I'm going to get the rod. I'm going I'm to I'm rod it out of him. I'm going to rod it out. I'm a rod. Are y'all listening to me tonight? You pray. I sp- that's what I do tell Pastor Church. You pray. I do the rest. You pray. I'm pow in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all be better right now if your mama gave you the rod. See, looks like y'all looking at me funny. Uh-huh. Somebody, somebody prayed for you. Somebody did pray for you, but somebody should have spanked you too. You would have been as small like you are right now. Look at y'all looking at me with this Gainesville look. I'll, amen. Look at somebody. Who do you think? <laughs> amen. I'm just, I'm just flowing with Cassandra was flowing. She talking about love, so I'm just going in love. <laughs> Y'all be mad at her. I'm just preaching her message. This is what she wanted to say. By the way, so, so, so we talk about falling in love with Jesus. Oh, when I fall in love with him, he begins to give me things I need to do. And so the Bible talks about that I fall in love with him, but he told me when I fall in love with him, I, I, I will fulfill all the other commandments. If I love you, I'm not going to shoot you. If I love you, I'm not going to steal from you. Well, if I love you. So the answer to folks is love. It really is. Well, you say, well, you know what, Pastor, I, I have a hard time loving folks. Well, I understand. I'm glad you've been honest. Well, the reality is this. You're trying to do it your love. I didn't ask you to love people with your love. Your love can't do it. I'm, let me tell you, your love, I know your love can't love nobody. My love can't either. I'm just, the natural human love, nah. It only love you when you've been loved. I guarantee you the chain when somebody hit you. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you it'll, it'll, it'll change when someone do you wrong. Oh, yes, it will. Yes, it will. I guarantee your, your love will turn into vengeance if somebody cut you. Oh, yes, it will. Somebody smack your child. Your love will turn. Your, shoot, you will transform. Come on, look at some of you. See, I'm not talking about your love. That's somebody cross you. Your love will change. I'm not talking about human love. I'm not talking about natural human love. I am talking about the agape love, the unconditional love, the love of God that passes all understanding, the love of God, God kind of love. See, all of you in here, if you are born again, born again means saved. Uh, John 3, 3 said, Nicodemus asked asked Jesus, uh, how can he get to heaven? He said, you must be born again. Nicodemus asked the question that most folks probably wanted to know. 
How can you, being old, get back into your mother's womb? He said, Nicodemus, you don't get it. He said, what's born of the flesh is flesh. What's born of the spirit is spirit. Just like you have to be born in the natural, you got to be born of the spirit. So Nicodemus had to get saved, had to get born again. So when a person confessed Jesus as their Lord, believe in their heart that God is raised from the dead, they are now what we consider born again. They are now born of the spirit. Why? Because the word of God is a seed. The Bible said, thy word is spirit and life. It is a seed. So therefore, when I'm born of the word, I'm born of the spirit. Now a person is what we call born again. They have the nature of God on the inside of them. Because they have God's nature, they now have access to the love of God. So now Romans 5 and 5 said it like this, the love of God has been shedded abroad in my heart. Come on now. By the love of God. It's been shed and brought in my heart by the Holy Ghost. So God's love has been shed, has been infused in me by the Holy Ghost. So now I can love you with Jesus' love now. And Jesus' love would take away selfishness. You know there's some selfish folks in society. Matter of fact, I know, I know some selfish folks right now. Get your finger right now. Put your finger up right now. We're going to point at them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and put the finger up. Come on. Y'all be obedient. Go ahead right now. Go ahead. Turn that finger and put it to your head right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's where we go. Yes. Did everybody do that? Yeah. See, everybody trying to point it over, folks. Because, see, your love is selfish. Oh, yes, it is. Look at some of y'all. See, we didn't say a mother love was like God's love. No, that's not the truth. Because a mother's love is really selfish. You just heard of the evangelist say it up here. Did y'all not hear that on the record? She said, Jesus gave her only begotten son. She said, but I don't know if I could do that. That's what she said. She said, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I can give my son to a world that don't respect him. That's selfish love. <laughs> I look at some of y'all. That's my baby. But God did not operate in selfish love. Come on now. He operated in selfless love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, the true love of God is always given of themselves. That's why. See, when you're walking up, you're always giving. People ask me, why are you such a giving? Why you got such a good heart? The love of God caused me to give. Caused me to give. Give of myself. Most folks don't want to give up themselves. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They're selfish. But they want God to bless them. Yeah, yeah. They're only concerned about their little crew. Or the three people in their household. Or the four people in their household. I always think about that. I always tell people that. I always tell people, you know, people believe in God for the money in their household. Do they ever think about believing God for the money in the church? No, 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 seriously. I think about that for a moment. I know you believe in God for your bills to get paid. You ever thought about believing God for the church? Nah, I ain't worried about no church bill again. I got to get my bill paid. Mm -mm, mm -mm. See, look at some of y'all. No. How do you think they get paid? No, 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 seriously. No, no. How do you think they get paid, Amanda? I'm about to mess up. How do you think they get paid? Do they just get paid like, I don't know. They just. I wonder if we would take the same initiative like you do in your own household. No, nah, that ain't my bill. Because selfish people is never concerned about other people. They, they don't. They don't. They, they, they can give a hoot about what everybody else is doing. That's the case. It's like, <laughs> I, as long as I'm eating today, <laughs> forget about what everybody else is doing today. See, that's selfish. But the love of God doesn't do that. The love of God is always concerned about it. Why do God want you to have money? Let's, let's get this thing because folks thinking, you know, God wants me to have money, you know, because, you know, so I can look good. You know, I can be on the GQ magazine. I can be on Ebony magazine. I can be on MTV magazine, Jet magazine. Don't be on that one. But anyway, we just, we, we, we you know, you know we, I want to do this. You know, I want the money so I can show people I got it going on. Do you realize you don't understand? If you think like that, you will never have any. I'm telling you, see, if you don't understand the purpose of money, it will come and go. See, God doesn't have a problem getting, giving money to people who are not selfish. When you're selfish with your money, God's not going to keep giving you any money because you don't understand prosperity. Prosperity is being blessed by God to meet the needs of mankind. But you cannot meet the needs of mankind if you're so selfish. 
If I say your bathroom needed work on, yeah, take up all of my bathroom. But if a bathroom in the church need to be worked on, girl, I don't know what they're talking about. It's something, see? Who? yeah, I said it. I believe the reason why, Chris, I am so blessed like I am is because I'm always thinking about how can we bless the church. No, 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 seriously. No, no. I mean, what, what can we do to get the stuff doing? But it's amazing when I do that, my needs are always met. Things are always happening. It's amazing because I'm always thinking about God's house, God's business, God things getting taken care of. What are they there? And when you do that, God takes care of your house. But if you're always concerned about your crew, what's going on with your household, you'll never. Well, Pastor, the Bible says if you don't take care of your house, you're worse than the infidel. I understand you do take care of your house, but you got to take care of your house, but you got to sow so you can take care of your house. I mean, how are you going to take care of your house? You never sow to get the system operates. So selfish people don't, I'm telling you, selfish people, we're not tired. Oh, here we go. No, selfish people were not tired because they're thinking, I'm going to get no 10% in no church. Mm-mm, guess you. you don't know what I got to deal with. You don't know what I'm going through. It's about me. But God says, do you realize, <laughs> I don't know if people really understand this. Yeah. Do you realize God could ask for more? He could ask for all of it. He only asked for 10%. Like you doing God a favor by giving him 10%. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get my tithe to the church. I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. Mm, they asked me for it. Like it's, like, first of all, you don't have a right to even say that. It's not even your money. <laughs> no. It's God's, it's supposed to be God's money. But see, you don't understand true prosperity. See, pr- I'm going to say something. Prosperity is nothing more than the love of God at work. Now think about it. Prosperity. It's nothing more than the love of God in work, in manifestation. Why do I tithe? Because I love Jesus. I want Jesus' house to be good. Just like we men, we come to the house. You know, it's like coming to the house talking about, where the food at? Where the food at? Well, did you buy the food and put it in the house? Well, why are you asking where the food at? <laughs> Look at some of the guys. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So, 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 did you buy it? Yeah, I bought it. Well, you click it. What? See, look, look at the man with the brother, huh? See, selfish people is always about them. It is. I'm telling you, selfish people can't do nothing for the kingdom. They lukewarm. They are lukewarm people. They're, they're just like you know, dear. They're not excited. They, 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 they just, you know. It's like, <laughs> I always tell people this. Unless people fall in love with God, I can bring up the Dallas cheerleaders. I said it because I like the Cowboys, okay. They're not in the Super Bowl, but, all right, you know. And they can get up here and cheer. Ooh, you know, hey, 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 hey. You know, not, but they, you know, if I, oh. We can bring the Gainesville marching band up in here. <laughs> and some people won't get excited because it's not even in them. That's why sometimes I know the ministers, they get up here and they be preaching, and some of y'all be like this. They be preaching it, they be preaching it harder. And God said you can do it. God loves you. Yeah. And y'all be like this. Well, what, 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 what do you do? I'm so used to it. <laughs> I, just, I just don't care about how people folks look. I got delivered when I was 19 years old and I started preaching. No, seriously. I did. You know, I, I preached at this particular denominational church, and I was up preaching the word of God. Man, I was preaching my little heart out at 19. I was preaching the word of God. Man, I've got them preach. Some folks looked at me. I thought they were going to be happy. But young whippersnapper like me, 19 year old, preaching the gospel. Boy, they just looked at me and just walked away. Well, I tell you, one particular deacon got up and just kind of looked at me. He did and just sat on down. I went back to the house and cried like a baby. Oh, yes, I did. I said, God, Lord. 
Lord, you know I was preaching the gospel, God. I'm preaching the gospel. I sat there for a while. I guess God let me powder for about 15, 20 minutes. Let me get it out. Then he looked at me. Well, he looked at me. I always looking at me. But he, I heard this. He said, I didn't cause you to p- preach what people w- want. I called you to preach what they need. And then number two, stop being moved by how they look. So I don't care how people look. Y'all can sit there and look like this. That's what I'm teaching preachers. Don't, don't be worried about how the folks look at you. Some folks look like they got a crap in their neck. That's all right. You just, just don't. Do you realize the word of God going to work? Whether or not you look ugly if you don't look ugly? I mean, do you realize that? I mean, the word of God has nothing to do with how your facial perspective looks. That's why God told Jeremiah, don't be moved by their what? Their looks. That's what he said. Y'all remember Jeremiah? He said, don't be moved by how they look at you. They're facing because folks can give you that look. Well, look back at them. Especially when a young preacher get up, he can get discouraged. Because some of y'all, I'm preaching, y'all, some of y'all like this. Hey, man. Mm, just got a Twitter, Facebook. All oh, right. Mm, like that one. What? what? <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me tell my tweet. Ooh, just got a tweet. Mm, okay. Bing. So notice it. Folks, <laughs> what are you talking about? Selfish. You, what you talking about? That's your selfish, because you're concerned about you. That's why, I, that's why I thank God that we do have hospitality in the church and, 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 and that, you know, that people are concerned about other folks eating. I, I like that, you know. Let's feed everybody. Let's love on folks. Let's get some folks, you know. Let's help some folks. You know, I like that. I mean, you know, you, know, you want to help folks. You want to give the folks. Well, what about them folks going to do you wrong? Well, we know there's a chance of them doing us wrong. That is. We understand that. But that shouldn't stop you from loving folks and giving and, and helping folks. Are you listening to me? That's what, didn't that the woman of God say? They're going to come and I may not look like you, may not smell like you. But guess what? That doesn't mean we stop giving and stop loving on folks. I tell you, I, I, got so t- I was blessed this past Sunday when we had, I, you know, I was talking to Pastor. I said, we got all this food up in here, man. I don't know how I'm going to get no food. <laughs> yeah, right. Man, folks, man, folks were coming out there. I was blessed to see folks come out there getting some stuff, bringing it to the That was a blessing. We got back. It wasn't that hardly nothing back there. But now I want to see if folks going to sow back into it. Because yeah. folks, you know folks will show up at the barbecue late and then want a plate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know folks show up at the barbecue, want a plate, and then want to get a care out when they leave. You understand what I'm saying? What did you bring? Nothing. Come on, can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Well, I told the, the hospitality, and I don't mean no harm by this. Wait, don't sign up for cups and plates here. Don't, don't sign up for no cups and no plates. If I want to sign up for cups and plates and spoons and ketchup packets. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We got ribs and beef and chicken and you know, filet melong on the menu and all this good stuff. Bring in all of this stuff. I'm, I'm going to sign up for ice. My God, I can go down to the place and get some free ice. It's amazing to me. You want to bring some dog on ice, but you want to get two plates when you leave. Folks, us. Okay, I mean, I got the clothes. You talking about? See, now y'all go looking. <laughs> I want to tell them on the hospital, don't put no ice on there, don't put no paper plates on there. Because folks will sign up for stuff called 25 cents. Bring you some beans they don't even want. <laughs> beans on clearance at the doggone gro- grocery store somewhere. Yeah. But they won't put it in their house. So I heard that Holy Ghost. You're going to bring stuff to the church that even, you don't even want to eat. Ooh, right by second. You, you understand what I'm saying? You buy stuff for folk that you don't even like. What you going to buy? I'm going to bless you buying you some, some ugly plaid jacket that, that, that you found on the doggone road. And t- you, some ugly, you got to love yourself jacket. Want to bring it to me. And then I got a problem with you. Thank you all that. Doggone, you don't even want to wear the doggone jacket. Buy something that you will wear. Ooh. I buy something for, I'm going to buy some nice for the church. It's amazing to me. It's just, it's just, but when you buy something, ooh, 
You buy your nice TV. Ooh, it got, it got Blu-ray, it got 1080p, progressive thing. Man, you look at it like you can just touch the phone. You buy a TV for a church, we can't hardly see it. It's a fuzzy. You see what I'm saying? See, you want God's best, but you don't give your... See what I'm saying? See, God looks at that stuff. I don't know. See, there are people looking. Oh. <laughs> I got to close. I got to close. I'm telling you, that's the truth. Y'all know that. Folks do that. Now, I know we, we folks got to be thankful. I understand that. I understand that. But, but love, man, God gave his best. So I got to mirror God. Come on now. I, I'm going to give the best. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm, I'm going to give the best. Come on. Can y'all say amen? amen. When I walk in, I want to buy the best. Come on. Give them the best. Now, we're not about money, but we want to give them the best. Are oh, y'all listening to me? Somebody said, I give God the best. That's what I understand. I don't understand folks understand God's best. I don't know if they understand what best is and what. Yeah. That's what it is. Some folks are just cheap. Just cheap. Talking about they, I'm, I'm on a budget. No, you're cheap. Oh, I'm telling you. You be cheap. I used to be like, I'm just going, man, I used to be cheap, just cheap, 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 mm, cheap, just cheap. I ain't cheap no more, though. Mm -mm. Used to be, used to be cheap. I can go and tell them myself, I don't get mad at me. You might get mad at me if I call you cheap. Uh, uh, you might be, though. But, 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 but see, see, I used to be cheap. Yeah, how much that call? Call $2. How much that other one call? One fifty five. How much that one call? 79 cents. How much that one call? 45 cents. Got to get that one for 25 cents. I don't tell. I don't care. They just want some macaroni and cheese at the church. I mean, do we got it? It's the expiration date gone. Get that stuff expired two months. Get it's all right. Let's just, they better just be thankful that the Lord wants to get some macaroni cheese up in the church. I just want to bless the church. But then you gonna take your tail home and buy that good old macaroni with the with the can got the good regular cheese up in there. You eating all good. We up in the, in the church eating like that. <laughs> That's the one that got braces gonna mess them up. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so I was just <laughs> Ah, you better not come in here, boy. They better mess you up. See, church folk do that. All in the name of Jesus, because I love you. If that's the way you love me, I don't want your love. I know they say what love got to do. Love got a lot to do with it. Rise to your feet. Let's go. Come on, let's go. So love gives its best. <laughs> Y'all better say amen up in here. Yeah, I know we're supposed to be thankful. I'm not saying we shouldn't be thankful. I understand that. But I'm talking about they got to get to the point where you give God. God got to see the motives of your heart. That's when I'm doing something for God. I want to give him my best. I got to put my best in it. I got to give him my best seed. I got to give him my best worship. I got to give him my best praise. Glory to God. You understand? I got to give him my best because, you understand what I'm saying? Give him your best. Every tree is known by its fruit. Fruit never lie. I'm telling you, I'm going to write a book on it. Fruit never lie. No, no. No, I'm going to give this one. Huh? No, no, no. And, you know, yeah, I got to say this. You know, and, you know, thank God for closing and all that stuff. But folks give stuff away. For, for folks they didn't have 55 years. Yep. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I mean, we, I had to tell folks to do that because it used to be, this used to be a thrift store, this place we're in, we're remodeling and made into a church. And I just, maybe, I don't know, several months, maybe a year ago, just come out here and have bags of clothes up here. I'm thinking, well, praise the Lord, somebody's, you know, donating some clothes to the church. Well, that's going to be a blessing. I look at the clothes, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Still got dirt on it. <laughs> Stop walking out of it. You know, I mean, no, I'm still talking about what, what is this up in here? And so we treat the church like we treat like a hand, hand down. Just. My mama didn't teach me like that, man. If I'm going to give something about wash that thing first. Wash the clothes. Can y'all say amen? Press it. Put, if you're going to give somebody a dress or a suit, put it in the cleaners. Then give it to them. Don't throw the stuff in there. I just want to give it to you. 
folks do that? I tell folks, I don't bring no more clothes up in this place that you don't want to wear. No, I stopped that. We ain't a thrift store. Don't do that. You mean I, no, we can, we're going to help people, but I want to show people we're going to give them the best. Amen. It don't have to be for, you know what I'm talking about? It don't have to be expensive clothes, but it has to be quality of how it's taken care of. You understand what I'm saying? There's throw stuff in there. Folks be looking. I'm like, God, look at this, man. God said, go bless the guy with some shoes. You go and go, you go to a place and find some $2 shoes. But then your kid needs some shoes. $55 on them. Mm. I got to get that baby some $55 shoes. How old is he? Two months. All right. $55 shoes. Uh-huh. But I, God told me to bless this person. He got $2. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What about with two months on these some $55 shoes, $5 shoes on? Could have got a little Nike sign. You better put a check on it. Check, check. That's, that's, that's your shoe. <laughs> you sell me out. I, I got clothes. I got clothes. That's why I stopped. At, at, when I worked at the workplace, we used to have uh, what they call it, Secret Santa, yeah. and uh, whatever. And I'm telling you, I talk, and they said, you know, the minimum of this is this. And they bring this, so I, you know me, and I go to the store, I'm trying to, you know, I'm like, man, what would I want? You know, that's how I think, you know. So I'm looking for something nice. Yeah. You know, bring something. I did that for the first year. I packed it up, had it written right now. Folks, saw the little gift. Ooh, had all, man, this is nice. God, I want my gift up. <laughs> A mug that even Santa didn't even want <laughs> with some stale doggone crackers in it. <laughs> oh, yes, that's what they did. I looked, I was thankful, I was. Picked it up, I looked at it, everybody was laughing. <laughs> I said, you know what? I said, what was amazing to me is this. Because people don't, gosh. I said there was a minimal amount you need to give, you know. But clearly, <laughs> these cookies was like stale. How you know? Because I ate them because I was mad. I know it was still. But it showed me the mentality of people. Yeah. Hear what I'm saying? I'm closing. It showed me that you always want to get something good for you. But when it's, when it's ready to bless somebody else. That's why I have no problem blessing Pastor Sherry with nice things. I'm going to do what I can do. I'm going to bless. Now, her buddy, I'm, I'm going I'm to give her. I want to bless. We're going to, you know, let's, let's, come on. They're going to invite you to a dinner and say, you know, we got a buffet, but you only eat, eat the broccoli. <laughs> so, y'all look, I'm, I'm, so y'all, y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know, folks are like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Lukewarm, selfish people. Is always concerned about themselves, and God can't lose them like He needs. Let Freedom Ministry not be a selfish church. Amen. Come on, come on, y'all understand what I'm saying? No, we're not into high pricing by any means. But I'm saying this: when we bless folks, when we give, when we sow, when we help, we do it out of the love of God. God gave Jesus His best. Jesus was the best. Would people agree with Jesus was the best? That's what she said. So give your best. Don't be selfish in here. No, don't be skimming. No, no, don't be selfish. Serve God. Love Jesus. Don't be lukewarm. I told you, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm going to live like I'm going to heaven. I'm, I'm going to do all what God wants me to do. And if I'm going to hell, y'all just get ready. I'm going to just buck, act buck wow. I'm, I'm gone. I'm I'm. Cigar, gin and juice, ride and live. I know, 
Yeah, I ain't say yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to live past the cigar, so that's why I'm saying right to live. <laughs> I think I didn't know about them Vidalia apples. Let me say that for the go. There are some Vidalia apples. I looked for, and I'll say that to you. There are Vidalia apples, but what I found out, it was Vidalia's apples recipe mixed with onions. <laughs> it did. I looked for it, and, and it was a pie. It was. It said Vidalia apples and onions pie. I said, there you go, them Vidalia apples. That's what I did. I looked. I found the apples in the Vidalia. I did. And then I call an evangelist. I ain't going to say her name. Hayes. But anyway, so I called this evangelist. I said, can you fast and pray for me? She said, my pastor told me don't pray for foolishness. <laughs> I couldn't get mad at her because that's what the apostle said. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless the people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You are dismissed. All right, man, we got to meet out the service.